Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be a little bit different than our normal video for the fact that it's not really a video, it's more of a podcast. If you guys are following along with the stream yesterday, you know that I ended up picking up the Lego Ninjago movie. You got it for a great deal on Amazon. I think it was just under $10. And I thought it'd be a great time to buy it and check it out since it's a movie that I hadn't seen yet. I did want to go see it in the movie theater, just never got around to it. And before I get into my actual review on this and kind of talk about it a little bit further, I just want to say that I have no experience with Lego Ninjago. It's something that's completely new to me. In fact, I mentioned yesterday that the only thing that I I really knew was that Lloyd was the green ninja and I know that I like some of the sets from the Lego Ninjago movie which we'll also talk about a little bit later in this but I think that's important to know going into this because my impressions of this movie are going to be from a standpoint of being completely new to it all. Now I'm just going to assume that there are other people that are in the same boat of not knowing anything about this movie or about the series in general so I'm going to give you a brief summary of the plot and I'm probably going to butcher this so if you guys want to correct anything that I say you can feel free to do that in the comments but this is the gist that I got after watching the movie one time. So I'll just start out with the basic plot. We have six Ninjago ninjas. They're all teenagers. They live normal lives. It focuses on the one ninja in particular whose name's Lloyd. And Lloyd is the green ninja, as I mentioned earlier. And unfortunately, his dad, who is Garmadon, is the villain in the movie. And Garmadon constantly attacks the city they live in, which is Ninjago City, I believe. People that live in Ninjago City don't know that Lloyd is the green ninja. They just know that Garmadon is his dad, and they absolutely hate him for that. So he's kind of an outcast, and he lives this kind of miserable existence existence within the city, although he is kind of the city's savior. I mentioned Lloyd has the help of five other ninjas fight off Garmadon every time he attacks. They're all different colors. Unfortunately, the movie focuses so much on Lloyd that I don't even know all their names. I know there's a Cole and a Jay, and that is all I know, and that's really sad. So what you end up with is this never-ending battle between Garmadon and the Ninjago ninjas, and eventually Lloyd gets the idea in his head that he's going to use the ultimate weapon against Garmadon, which happens to be a laser pointer. And when he starts using it on him, he messes it up, and he ends up pointing it in a different direction, and what happens is this real-life cat enters the scene and starts destroying Ninjago City, which is, of course, Lloyd's fault, and he feels very bad about, but Garmadon gets a hold of this laser pointer and ends up taking out the rest of the Ninjago crew, so at this point, Garmadon takes over the city and the cat is wreaking havoc on everyone and it's just kind of a disaster. Luckily, the Ninjago guys have Master Wu, who is their leader, and he recommends that they go find the ultimate, ultimate weapon, which just to make this really quick, are a bunch of different elements that tie in with each of the Ninjago guys' powers. But what the movie really boils down to is that it's not an item that makes them all powerful. It's the power within them. It's their inner peace. And then they use those powers to actually defeat Garmadon and eventually the cat. Before we wrap up the plot, there there is one very important point at the end of it, and it's that Lloyd reveals that he is the green ninja in front of the town when he ends up saving Garmadon from the cat, who happened to eat Garmadon and then spit him back out, and everyone lived happily ever after with Lloyd's parents kind of getting back together, Lloyd being with his dad, and then the cat becoming a beloved mascot of the city. And hopefully that terrible review of the movie doesn't stop you from watching it because there are some really good points to it. There are also some negatives, which I'll talk about now. And I also want to talk about how this movie compares to the other two Lego movies, including the original Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie. So what did I like about the Lego Ninjago movie? First of all, it has the same great looking, very bright colors that the other Lego movies have. And I find that very appealing. I love how they use Lego pieces for pretty much everything. And obviously the characters are all minifigures. It's just a really good looking movie. Another thing that I like about it, and this is really going to date myself, although maybe not, I used to watch the Power Rangers as a kid, and the Ninjago guys kind of remind me of the Power Rangers. Everybody has their own color, everyone has their own very unique personality. You kind of have like the rough guy, you have the girl, you have maybe like the nerd, you have the robot in this case, although he says he's not a robot. And everybody kind of plays that role and has their color, and I really like that. And the one other big thing that reminds me of Power Rangers is the fact that they use mechs. I know in Power Rangers they use zords that make a Megazord. In this case, they all keep their own individual mechs, but they use those mechs to fight against Garmadon, which I think is really cool. And of course, just like Power Rangers, at least the original series, you always have the, the bad guy that's attacking the city over and over again, and these guys have to keep fighting him off every single time, and it just keeps going on forever. So that kind of took me back to my childhood, and I like that. And I will say, watching this with a three-year-old, Clark also really liked the style of this movie. At least he was entranced in it for a very long time until he eventually kind of got distracted with it. But that's what happens when you watch with a little kid. In terms of the story, I thought it was okay. It kind of reminded me of the original Lego movie with 
the craggle being replaced with the ultimate weapon, which was originally the laser pointer, and then the little items that become their secret powers, or I guess symbolize what their powers are. But in both movies, you have the main character kind of seeking this thing that is very powerful. So I guess with the Lego Ninjago movie, you could say that they were trying to play it safe, but in my opinion, it just doesn't quite have the charm of the original movie. I feel like the characters in the original Lego movie really stood out. In fact, I even liked Evil Lord Business more so than what I liked Garmadon. And then, of course, you had Emmett and Wild Style, and you know them all. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast, if we're calling it that, I can't even name all of the Ninjago characters. And I'm pretty sure that their names were mentioned in the movie at some point, so maybe that's just my bad. Maybe Lego and Warner Brothers is thinking that the people who are watching this probably know everything there is to know about the Ninjago series, but that's just not true in my case. Next thing we'll talk about is humor. You know with all these Lego movies, a big focal point is having comedy in it. And this movie did have some funny moments, but it was nowhere near as funny as the Lego Batman movie. That movie just had so many like inside jokes and so much comedy, and it was just such a great movie for that aspect. This movie kind of fell flat in that regard, at least in my opinion. So just to keep this moving, I guess I'll say this. This movie isn't quite as good in terms of story as the original Lego movie, and isn't quite as good in terms of humor as the Lego Batman movie. It kind of just fits somewhere in between. It doesn't do anything particularly well. It just kind of sits there. If I had to rate this movie in order of all of the Lego movies, this would probably be the one on the bottom. But being that it is a Lego movie, I found myself falling in love with it, and it really does fit into the catalog of Lego movies. I don't think this is one that you should avoid. I would definitely recommend at least watching it once, especially if you're a Ninjago fan. Although I'm sure if you are a Ninjago fan, you've probably already seen it. Now, while I do kind of feel like this movie's middle of the road where it's not really great and not really bad, one of the best things that came from this movie are probably the sets that they made. The few that I like are Destiny's Bounty, which is this really great looking boat. We have Garmadon, 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 which is Garmadon's first vehicle that he attacks the city with and gets completely destroyed. But it's this really great looking shark, which I absolutely love. And in a similar fashion, you have Garmadon's second weapon that he attacks the city with, which is actually successful, and that is the Garma Mecha Man, which looks absolutely awesome. In fact, I'm trying to figure out which of those two that I like the most because I'm thinking about buying one of them. But it doesn't stop there. You also have the Green Ninja Mech Dragon, which I absolutely love and has been on sale for $40 for a very long time. And then probably my favorite of the bunch, and obviously the most expensive, is Ninjago City, which is just a fantastic set. So I will say this. These sets absolutely destroy the sets from the original Lego movie, and if you like mechs, they also have all of the different Ninjago characters' mechs available as well. So it's just mech crazy, and that's something that I enjoy with LEGO. So again, in my opinion, the sets absolutely beat the movie here, but I'm glad they made the movie just to make these sets, if that makes sense. Let me know what you guys recommend, and let me know what you think about my thoughts on this movie. Do you think I gave it a fair assessment as a person that's never actually experienced Ninjago before? Do you think I was too harsh on it? Do you think I was too kind? I'm really curious to see what you guys think. I do read all the comments, and I appreciate your feedback on this. And I also want to say, if you are watching this on the day that I'm actually releasing this, we are going to be streaming tonight. Uh, hopefully with Clark, man, we'll kind of have to see how things go. Uh, but we are going to be doing that here in the evening. I don't know exactly what time, but if you guys keep checking back and make sure you have notifications turned on, we will uh, we'll be streaming and we'd be glad to have you along with us during that. It's a lot of fun. So thank you for watching this. Again, I know it was something a little bit different, but that again was one of my goals in 2018 is to make some different videos. And I guess this can be considered my very first audio podcast. So thank you for watching. And as always, we'll see you later tonight.